Basketball fans, oh, it's a good, good time of year, isn't it? It's the time of year where Raptor basketball is meaningful now. None of this pregame or preseason nonsense, it's come and gone. And for the Toronto Raptors, they're about to embark on one of the weirder years. And, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, first things first, tip off. Tomorrow, game one of 82 between the Raptors and the Cavaliers is at Scotiabank Arena at 7.30 tomorrow night. And before I get into all the stuff that will, you know, what we need to do and all the question marks going into this year, um, we've all kind of heard this Brian Windhorst stuff. You know, you know, you hear the stuff where he's like, the Raptors are poised to, you know, make a big splash of the deadline. And we're like, whoa, this is kind of crazy. Uh, who and what are we talking about here? Um, so hearing stuff like that, and we know what this roster looks like, and we're expecting uh, to contend and to be in the top eight of the East, wherever that may lie. So I'm very intrigued to see what happens there. But before we get to the trade deadline, we got to get through, you got to get through games. And... There are a lot of question marks for this Raptor team. We talked about it in the preseason preview. We talked about it all through preseason. There are question marks, and we saw them during the preseason. And the big one I wrote down was your three-point shooting. That is something that plagued the Raptors last year. We talked about it after that Philly series, that they needed some three-point shooting. They needed to be able to knock down their threes. If they're not going to be able to do so, they're going to have a tough time in a, in a league that just shoots the three a ton. You know what I mean? So... And they didn't really address that too much. I mean, Otto Porter Jr. is a career 40% three-point shooter coming off the bench. I mean, he's a guy that's uh, hopefully going to impact this team uh, in that in that way. And I'm hoping when he's healthy that he can impact this squad um, in many different ways. But, uh, like veteran leadership-wise, I was just won a championship with the Golden State Warriors. So he knows what it takes, right? As do a lot of the Raptors they have now. But these are like different guys from different organizations who have won chips. So hopefully that can work. And... And let's be honest, if he's a guy who can come off the bench and drill for like 35, 40% from three consistently, we'd be in pretty good shape. And he's a big piece of this bench because that was the thing last year, right? And it's a domino effect. You bring in Otto Porter to stabilize your, stabilize your bench a little bit. And what was the problem last year? Well, minutes. And more in particular, Fred Van Vliet's minutes. So bringing in an Otto Porter Jr., if he can be a reliable bench guy that you were, again, he's better than this guy, but I'm just saying, like you were kind of hoping that Shima High Luke would be. You were hoping he'd be a guy coming off the bench, shooting a bunch of threes, put you in a good spot, right? Allow your starters to rest, but he just became a liability, couldn't shoot the three at all, was not great on defense, and basically fell right out of the rotation. And then you got to a point where you had to play, you know, Pascal, OG, Fred, you know, uh, Gary Trent, all these at 40 minutes plus. You know, remember that uh, oh, that overtime game against the Miami Heat where dudes had to play over 50 minutes because it's like, you didn't have, they weren't resting during the first 48. So this year is very important and Otto Porter is very important because if he can find a way to stabilize that bench a little bit along with, you know, pressure chewing guys like that, then that'll bring down minutes for Fred Van Vliet, for Pascal Siakam, and allow them to be more fresh down the stretch, right? So that's very important. Fred Van Vliet's minutes are very important. We saw last year, we talked about it from the beginning of the season, you know, he's averaging the most minutes in the NBA, and look, we're winning games, which is nice, but that's going to come back and bite you at some point, and it did, because in the playoffs, he wasn't healthy. Down the stretch, he wasn't healthy. We're having sin mother every other game because he wasn't feeling very good, all that stuff. It was not pretty at all to witness Fred Van Vliet going through all that stuff. You cannot allow that to happen again. You know, and with that being said, what's Malachi Flynn going to give you? Because he's a guy that's kind of at the end of that rope. This is kind of his year. Hey, make a, you know, show up or shut up, right? And then that's just the way it's going to be for Malachi this year. This is, I believe this is the last year on his deal. I could be wrong with that. I could be, you guys can correct me about that. But I believe it's the last year on his contract. You know, and he showed some signs last year of having some pretty good games. He put a really good summer together, which was nice. Uh, I mean, he got injured early in, early in preseason, but he's got to make that step. And he's a guy, he's a very important guy for Fred Van Vliet. You know, he can perform. That'll ease up on Fred. Delano Banton, you know, what is he going to give you? Because we, look, to talk about Delano Banton, you know, great preseason, looked really, really good dominated the, the, the G League last year, 
but you want that next step in the regular season. And for a guy like Delano, you know, it, him and him and Malachi are low key the most important guys on this team right now because they play well. It limits Fred's minutes, which makes the team better. So that's that's very crucial. Now I wrote down a lot of other names here, like Christian Coloco, kind of with a question mark, like what's he going to give you this year, right? We saw it in preseason. The guy fouls a ton, but when he's on the floor and he's not fouling guys, the dude's very effective. Especially on the defensive end, you know, blocking shots and whatnot. He's very effective. But what's he going to give you on a night-to-night -night basis? A lot of G League work probably for him, which is fun. Now, obviously, you're looking for a breakout season, you know. And Pascal, you know, you're looking for him to continue to be all NBA Pascal. Do what he did last year, continue to develop and grow and get better. You know, you're looking for Scotty Barnes. And I think he's the big one here. He's the big one because we all talk about this team wanting that superstar, right? We, you know, you need a, in a superstar-driven league, you want a superstar to win a championship. And the question was, well, is Pascal a superstar? Pascal said before the season he wants to be a top player, five player in the league. And we're like, well, that's pretty gutsy to say. We'll see. Um, but for me and for all of us, Scotty Barnes just won Rookie of the Year. He got dropped it very high. We're looking for him to take that next step in his young career. What's he going to give you this year? You know, excuse me, guys. My aunt's going to kill me for that. That's all right. Um, what's Scotty Barnes going to give you? You know, is he going to give you what he gave you last year, which isn't bad at all. You know he's going to be integrated in the offense more. But the problem is, with that being said, well, who's going to be who's going to be kind of used less? I mean, OG, we already heard the offseason stuff. He wants a ball more, this, that, so... Well, I don't know what's going to happen there. What's Gary Trent Jr. going to give you on a consistent basis? We'll have to see. Like, there's going to be so many question marks. And we're, like I said, we're all looking for that next step. For OG, can the dude stay healthy? When he's on the floor consistently, he's damn good. We all know it. We all know that. Gary Trent Jr., can he shoot the ball on a consistent basis? Can he build off of that season last year defensively where he was at, the, at one point like leading the league in deflections and steals? and all? It was incredible the way he started last year defensively. But can he continue to do that? And can he shoot the three and then shoot, shoot his jumper on a consistent basis? That's the big question for him. Can he take that next step in his young development? Can Presha Chua, we know the confidence in Presha Chua has gone up and up and up since last year. However, confidence is one thing. Going out there and doing it is a completely different thing. What's he going to give you? We know what he gave us post-All-Star break last year, which was phenomenal stuff. But what's he going to give you in the regular season this year? Full 82. That's a question mark, right? I have good feelings about it, don't get me wrong, but I want to see it. And I know I've talked about Scotty Barnes, but I'm going, to, I'm going to end off with it. He is the key for this team. We've seen now what All-NBA Pascal, All-Star Fred Van Vliet, we've seen what those two guys can do to take this team to a certain level. But you have a, if you have a third guy in Scotty Barnes... To take that big leap, that big step in his development. This guy might be the limit for this team. Could, it could go either way, you know. If he stays the same or he has a little bit of a down year, then yeah, we're not so sure about this year. But if he takes that next step and becomes damn good and averages, like I'm going to go crazy with this, uh, like 20, hell, if, he, if he averages 20, you know, we're talking big things. Right? So there's big question marks for this Raptor team, but it's going to be a lot of fun. It's really going to be a lot of fun for this Raptor squad. All right? Raptor fans, game one of the season. If you, if you guys want to talk about anything else in the comments, right? This, is, this video is really for you guys as well. Go nuts in the comments. What, what you're expecting, who you want to see take that next step in their development. Guys like that, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and are jacked up for Raptor basketball to be back in action, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. If you guys not already, comment down below your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on the uh, on the preview. If you want to add anything, like I said, go nuts in the comments. Twitter link is down below. So follow up, send me a DM to that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys, of course. You guys know when I'll talk to you. Tomorrow, well, well, actually, well, Thursday leaves edition as they're at home taking on the Dallas Stars, 7.30 puck drop there. I think 7 or 7.30. They play Dallas on Thursday. As for the Toronto Raptors, game one of 82.
It's going to be a tough start to the season for the Raptors. Really heavy schedule to start the season. But you got to go one game at a time. Tomorrow, 7.30, Raptors, Cavaliers. The battle of the, the rookie of the year and the runner-up rookie of the year in Evan Mobley. We'll see what happens tomorrow, right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and are jacked up for Raptor basketball. Talk to you guys then.